welcome to the breathtakingly beautiful San Domenico Golf in Italy for the penultimate Legends Tour highlight show of the year. Stay right where you are. We've got all this coming up over the next 60 minutes. We find out why, whether you're a golfer or not, this stunning part of Italy should be on your list of must-see places to visit. If you've never been in San Domenico, well, shame for you. Michael Campbell and Roger Chapman battle it out in the longest hole in golf. OK, I've got 115 yards. It's probably like a little pitching wedge for me. Local legend Constantino Rocca tells me about the strength and depth in Italian golf. This is your first event for a while. How are you feeling? Uh, feeling like a... Skin of rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have the best of the action from the Pro-Am. And, of course, we'll have extended highlights from this week's main event, the Sergio Malpignano Senior Italian Open. The last time we saw you was at the Riegler and Partner Legends in Austria, where Mauricio Molina secured his maiden victory on the Legends Tour. That's the shot of a man who knows his work is done. He's now just enjoying himself big moments. That four-shot win for the charismatic Argentinian meant that the order of merit looked like this as the players arrived here this week. San Domenico Golf is the final stop on European soil for this year's Legends Tour, and it's safe to say this picturesque corner of Italy is one of the most idyllic places we have been lucky enough to visit. Here's a beginner's guide to why this jewel in the crown of Italian golf should be on your list of must-see places to visit. Located where the Puglian countryside meets the azure of the Adriatic Sea, San Domenico looks like it's been designed by the golfing gods. I've been involved in San Domenico 20 years ago when uh, Sergio Meppignano, the owner of, uh, of this beautiful resort, unfortunately Sergio is not anymore with us. But 20 years ago, Sergio told me, Alessandro, I would like to start to organize a tournament in San Domenico. Regione Puglia for him is, was very, very important. So he put all his effort to build Borgo Ignazia, to have this beautiful golf course. It's got strategically placed bunkers dotted around its intricate layouts and the immaculate fairway zigzag among centenary olive trees, with glimpses of the ancient city of Ignathia visible at times. San Domenico Golf Course is a technical course. It's very close to the sea, so you will play probably 200 days per year with a pretty windy. So this is probably the more difficult things that you have to face when you play in San Domenico. But golf isn't the only thing to do in this historic area. Whether you're a golfer or not, there is something for everyone within a stone's throw of the course. When you're arriving in San Domenico, uh, you are so much uh, impressive about this place that you might probably want to stay just here, but uh, Regione Puglia is really one of the best places to, to visit. You have Salento, you have uh, Bari, Albero Bello. You have so many things to discover. So, what are you waiting for? Pack your golf clubs and your guidebook for a trip you'll never forget. It's like, it's like a dream. I mean, if you've never been in San Domenico, well, shame for you. I'm joined by a legend of Italian golf, Mr. Costantino Rocca. Thank you for talking to me. What a place this is. The view is fantastic. I don't have a time to become angry. <laughs> <laughs> this is a Ryder Cup legacy event. How important is the Ryder Cup being in Italy? But it's important like uh, every other uh, competition. Let's talk about the work that the Italian Golf Federation are, are doing to grow golf in Italy. I do very good the last few years. Uh, especially because of the, the professional play on the tour, uh, like Migliozzi, Paratore, uh, he's doing very good results in, in the European tour. And uh, for this reason, I think a lot of uh, young kids uh, is coming watching TV and uh, improve a lot of, but we need to continue and uh, improve uh, the facility for the kids. Mm -hmm. And uh, for this reason, I think, uh, it's much better if, uh, if you can put the sport in the school. You give more opportunity to come into the golf course. Throw them in younger. Yeah. There we go. Uh, now, I understand you've had an injury. This is your first event for a while. How are you feeling? I'm uh, feeling like a 
it's Kino Rabbit. <laughs> you can move in this way and that way. <laughs> now, a little bit better, I can coming up now. Good. Before I cannot, maybe next year uh, we can try to play some tournament more. But very important for you to be here this week? Yeah, yeah, because uh, I love this place. Uh, I love to see my old friends. <laughs> It's a long time, nearly two years, mm -hmm. and uh, it was like coming uh, home again. <laughs> Started tour uh, is my life because I play for 30 years, and, and that is very important, especially in, in this fantastic place. Hope uh, my friends uh, and competitor uh, he enjoyed this week. Thank you, Costa, so much for talking to us. It's my pleasure. That's all for part one. After the break, Roger Chapman and Michael Campbell take on the longest hole in golf. And we'll have the best of the action from the Sergio Malpignano Senior Italian Open. Don't go away. Welcome back to the Legends Tour highlight show from the stunning San Domenico Golf in Italy. Before we get to the best of the action from the Sergio Melpignano Senior Italian Open, here's what happened when Roger Chapman and Michael Campbell took on what we're calling the longest hole in golf. The seventh at Satsuki in Japan is believed to be the longest hole in golf at 964 yards, but we've created one that's over a thousand. And today, Roger Chapman and Michael Campbell are going head to head to see who can conquer the monster of San Domenico. Gentlemen, thank you for joining me. This is um, a challenge for you both. We reckon that we are asking you to play about 1,200 yards from here on the second tee all the way down to the 16th, which is at the bottom end of the course. So it is quite a challenge. And as you say, it's windy. Can I get an idea from you of what you'd hope to hit? I would say probably a seven would be a good. Uh, it's even an eight would be probably a good day. Yeah. Are you both ready for this challenge? We're up for it, yeah. Right, let's do it. Michael, you volunteer very kindly to start. Bang into the wind as well. So uh, I can see the clubhouse, the first and the fifth. Where are you kind of aiming? Well, my intended line <laughs> is the um, palm tree next to the clubhouse there. That's okay. where I want to go. Have a go. Good luck. Oh, it's absolutely bang straight over the first fairway. That'll do. I'm happy with that. Absolutely lovely. Oh, lovely. Well, he's done what he said on the tin. Well, I'm going to hit a little stinger three wood. OK, let's go. Michael, where's the next shot that you and Brian have discussed? Got to cut over to the right-hand side of the clubhouse. It's about 195 to carry that tree, so okay. I should carry with the three wood. Carry the clubhouse. Carry the clubhouse. <laughs> oh. Oh, we're taking wow. that one. He's only gone and nailed it. Very exciting. Come on, then. OK, three shots taken. We can see the pin. Well, I think your line is towards that um, olive tree. <laughs> <laughs> Which one? No, the one with the white. <laughs> yeah. The one just left of the pit. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, right. That's your okay. line, mate. That's your right. line. Well, we are creeping up on it slowly, but here we go. This will be your fourth. Some quite supreme placement, given bunkers in the clubhouse. I applaud you. <laughs> uh, so, again, we can see the 16th. We can see... Are you going for the same olive tree? Yeah, definitely. All right. That's, five, a, short, that's a short away. 535 five to the front. 535, five, OK. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. A little stinger, I think. OK. A little low one. That's right at the olive very tree. good. I, it's so good, I nearly swore. Right, <laughs> let's go. Shot number five. What do you think it is? Uh, 372. Is that in range? <laughs> <laughs> I was joking. Shot number five. Oh, well, again. You're getting good at this shot. I think this one's in range. OK, I've got 115 yards. It's probably like a little pushing wedge for me. I like it a lot. That's on the green as well. Well, hit a green. Well in done. In regulation. <laughs> right, cheeky little left to right. I should point out that if you're down in the same number of shots, the playoff hole is also 1,200 <laughs> yards, all right? Roger, you're first. <laughs> right. Just by a tiny margin. All right, a little left to right. Wind left to right. Oh, the suspense was unbearable. That's very Short. nice. 
Tiny bit short. Nice birdie. I got my birdie, anyway. Very nice. <laughs> yeah, we're giving you that. That's an eight, Roger. Congratulations. Well done. Michael, you've got this to win it. Just a reminder, if you're down an eight, play off hole 1,200 yards back over the clubhouse. OK. All right. The whole little three-putt, Mike, please. OK. <laughs> <laughs> Well, he's given it the distance. Has he got it in? Ooh, oh, good effort. it's so close, good effort. and he's given himself something to do on the way back. So that's, that's got to be given, surely. I'll give you that. From the second to the 16th. 16th, pretty good. Do you feel a sense of achievement? <laughs> it's a first. <laughs> it's a first time, yeah, yeah. so it's, it's been fun. No, it's, fun. Yeah, it's been really good. Good luck this week. Play well. Thank Thanks. you very much. Thank you. Right, here's what happened when I caught up with Legends Tour favourite Marcus Breer to discuss his chances of winning the Order of Merit and hear about his all-important pre-round warm-up routine. Marcus, thanks for joining us on the range here at San Domenico. And also your caddy, the Llamas, here, just watching on. Let's talk about your season so far. Yeah, I had my first win, which I really enjoyed very much at Forest of Arden and in a good position at the end of the season, yeah. Well, listen, you're fifth on the Order of Merit ahead of this tournament and uh, with Mauritius to come. So how do you feel your prospects are of winning? I think if I have two good tournaments uh, here and in Mauritius, I still have a chance and I will go for it, definitely. Let's talk pre-round routines. Drive our car into the car yeah. park, grab a coffee, walk onto the first tee, give it a bit of this, yeah. and then wonder why we, like, slice it or <laughs> top it or whatever. Whatever, yeah. So, how does your pre-game routine go? First of all, I come a bit earlier, probably. Warm up all the golf muscles, which are a lot. The best thing is to just make a lot of practice swings because a lot of people that great the uh, practice swing looks smooth and everything yeah and suddenly the ball is there and everybody goes Bleh. yeah <laughs> so uh, <laughs> i know that one <laughs> i've seen a few <laughs> so no not with you i think to just get a rhythm get a feeling and then go from there so talk me through your routine once you get here to the range i take my pitching wedge i normally start with my pitching wedge right and then i just go and try like really easy yeah 10 20 times and you don't no. see amateurs do this very much i no, don't think no normally they go maybe driver and <laughs> whack it yeah and it's true even the first shot i don't look where the ball is going you feel it feel it yeah i okay. just go and go there the most important thing is just to get the rhythm to get a feeling when we get to the bigger clubs the drivers, the woods. What what would you recommend to amateurs to be doing then, apart from don't kill, kill it? Kill it. <laughs> which is what I get it's told It's a very all the good time. point. Yes. One of the things with the longer clubs or with the woods, people always try to hit it up in the air and try to get it airborne. And by doing that, they are actually achieving the opposite because golf clubs are really built yeah, that they do the work. Okay. We don't have to do that much work, yes? I mean, you make it, so you don't have to do too much work, <laughs> but go on. So what I'm thinking, actually, when I hit my drives, to go really shallow through the ball and let the club do the work. And it goes up in the air. So that's what I, I see sometimes, that by trying to hit it up in the air, the people hit over the ball or thin it because they come up too early. OK. So just try to get a shallow follow through and by that, the club will lift the ball up in the air. I mean, I'd, I'd like to point out at this point that every <laughs> member of our crew is like, oh, <laughs> at that, because that is just magic. Yeah, but that's my profession. I've been doing that for 40 years. I know, but... <laughs> Marcus, thank you so much for your tips. Good luck this week. Thank Let's you hope you much. get another win on the board. Thank you very much. Thank you. I will try. <laughs> Time to see if the players taking part in the Pro-Am would put any of those wise words into action. Here's what happened when the great and the good of Puglia descended on San Domenico to join some of our legends for a day they'd never forget. The Pro-Am was the ideal way for a bunch of talented amateurs to test themselves around this magnificent course in the company of our legends. The course lived up to its five-star billing, as did some of the golf on display. The situation is wonderful. The two pros are just amazing. All of the amateurs were making the most of playing alongside the pros who were more than happy sharing their wisdom out on the course. 
we are having a lot of fun. Uh, it's of yeah. course the pros are making the difference, but they are also you know teaching us something. For me, it's been very rewarding. Great weather and great golf ensured everyone had a fantastic day. But ultimately, it was a team led by Gary Wollstoneholme and Philip Golding who emerged victorious, much to their obvious delight. Great company, uh, and we played nicely together. And, uh, and the atmosphere was fantastic. Yes, we had a good time. When you win, you are always happy. <laughs> At least we've won. We get, uh, we get invited back next year, don't we? Absolutely. So that's good. All right, time now for the best of the action from the main event. Here are the highlights from the first day of the Sergio Malpignano Senior Italian Open. Thanks, Georgie. The countdown is on to Italy staging its first Ryder Cup less than two years from now, and seven members of European teams gone by are in the field this week, including Italy's own Costantino Rocca, part of winning teams at Oak Hill in 95 and Valderrama in 97. Still battling away at almost 65 years of age, but it's an opening 80 for Rocca. Stephen Dodd's already had a year to remember as the first Welsh winner of the Senior Open since Brian Huggett 23 years ago. Another fantastic iron shot there from Doddy. He's a master with those wedges. Solid 71 for Dodd. 2021 has also been kind to Thomas LeVay with wins in France and Scotland. That recognisable technique. Thomas LeVay, a little bit disappointed with that one. Yeah, struggles for LeVay as he opens up with 75. Still no top tens this year for Michael Campbell, but birdie on 12 for the ever popular New Zealander. Down the hill, right to left. No troubles for Michael. Level par 72 for Campbell. And from a major champion to a double senior major winner. Yeah, Roger Chapman won both US majors in 2012. Another superb approach there. And 71 leaves him well placed for a good week. Now only one player has ever won this event twice, that's the American Clark Dennis. Lovely action there, look at that one, straight in. Dennis in the mix on 70. Peter Baker's not had a win in 2021, but he's been hammering on that door all season. Very consistent, Bakes. Got to be due for a win soon. And after he also shot 70, maybe this will be the week. Emmanuel Canonica, still in his first year at this level. Yeah, lovely to see him out there, wonderful touch. And raising early hopes of a home win, thanks to his 68. Recent signs have been good for Joachim Hegman as he also chases a first win among the over 50s. Quality action there from Heggy. Nice control, keeping it below the hole. Lovely that one, wasn't it? And 67. A very good score for the Swede in testing conditions. And it was a score matched by David Shacklady. Superb on the greens, as always, David. Birdie for him, so Shaq Lady and Hegman tied at the top on five under, with Peter Wilson also finishing in style. Awkward shot there, but he's making that look very easy. What he doing? <laughs> Laughing all the way to the top of the leaderboard as part of that three-way tie, with Canonica one behind. Baker and Dennis joined on two under by Ricardo Gonzalez and James Kingston. Day one saw some absolutely exquisite golf on display and the quality shots just kept on coming. Here are the highlights from day two of the Sergio Melpignano Senior Italian Open. San Domenico in the southeast of Italy, a wonderful November setting for the last European-based event of a memorable season. For the second round, some testing wins for the contenders to battle with and overnight joint leader David Shacklady finding few glimpses of his day one form. Lots of touch and skill needed here around the greens with this wind. He's done a great job with that one. Shack Lady falling away though with 74. Now Ricardo Gonzalez had an eagle at the second. Here he is on number three. Two shot. High using the wind. Great result there. 71 though, not quite the move he was hoping for. Gonzalez three under. And so was his fellow Argentinian, Rafael Gomez, both trying to follow their compatriot, Mauricio Molina, who won the last event in Austria. Birdie put on 12, just dying of exhaustion, and helping Gomez to a 69. A 
score which was emulated by Paul Wessling. Third shot to 18 here for Paul. Just missing the green. Great attempt. Eight times a winner on this tour. He's four under. Looking well for someone who turned 60 last month. Now look closely here and you might just see the defending champion. Barry Lane. Beautiful approach, third shot there. Eagle on two, the highlight of a 68. Lane four under as well. Emmanuel Canonica's the big hope for an Italian win. He bounced back from an opening bogey to birdie the second. Here he is at the short third. Towering iron shot, trying to use the wind as well. Sweeping it in, that's a wonderful shot. Superb from Canonica. And not surprisingly, he popped that in. He eagled the sixth and went on to shoot 70 for six under as he flies the home flag. Our first look of the week at John Bickerton, putting for birdie on 12. Great roll from John, keeping the flag in and using it to full effect. Bickerton closes on six under. Nobody bettered his 67, only one player matched it. And that was the South African James Kingston, seen here at the fifth. Kingston into second place on seven under par, trailing this man, Joachim Hegman. Bogey at the first proved to be his only drop shot of the day. His first birdie came here at the third. Four more would follow, almost a three in spectacular fashion at the last, but still good work to make par from there. Joint leader at the start of the day, now he's out on his own. Hegman too clear then of Kingston, with Bickerton and Canonica a stroke further back. None of them has ever won on the Legends Tour. Plenty of past winners though, lurking just behind. After the break, we'll have all the action from the third and final day of the Sergio Melpignano Senior Italian Open. See you in a couple of minutes. Welcome back to the Legends Tour highlight show from San Domenico Golf in Italy. Time now for the best of the action from a nail-biting third and final day at the Sergio Melpignano Senior Italian Open. An intriguing mix of experienced Legends Tour winners and players looking to win out here for the very first time on this final day at San Domenico. Joachim Hegman bidding to add to his three wins on the regular tour. James Kingston and John Bickerton were also multiple winners at that level. Mark Aspen there, Chief Operating Officer for the Legends Tour. And Hegman down quickly for his peg at the first. Everyone out on the course now. Here's a taste of the early action. Now, Philip Price so nearly won in Ireland back in the summer. Wedge shot here to the first. Always a great part of Phil's game. And the Welshman applied the finishing touches to that for an opening birdie, getting it to four under. Rafael Gomez also looking to start with a move in the right direction. Beautiful stroke there. Yeah, birdie for Gomez as well. He's had another at the second to get to five under. Stephen Dodd at the fifth, also looking for his second birdie of the day. This boy can also putt, demonstrating it there, very casual. He goes to six under. David Shacklady followed his opening 67 with a dispiriting 74, but this is to start with a birdie. The greens are running pure, and these guys are just draining them from everywhere. Well, Shacklady will go on to birdie four of the first six, vaulting him all the way to seven under par. John Bickerton looking to get up and down and make it a par, par, par start. Always a great short game. No exception there, wonderful shot from Bix. And he's since birdied the fourth. Bickerton also seven under. Canonica looking to get to that score also, here at the second. That's like that are gonna help him today. The home favorite. No Italian has ever won this title. Now the overnight leader has started with a par. This is where Hegman is in two at the long second. Missing the green on the par five, but a wonderful recovery there. He's got his birdie there, but he's given it straight back at the next hole. James Kingston started the day in second place. Birdie for him here on two as well, and he's added another at the fourth. 
superb start from Kingston. Just what he would have wanted today. Settle any nerves. And with Hegman only managing par on four, Kingston has very quickly eliminated his two-stroke overnight deficit. Let's hear from the South African. To be right in there, that's why we practice, that's what we, why we do what we do, you know, is to be right in there and got off to a decent start. Weather seems a little calmer, so uh, everything going all right so far. So let's pick up the action now with Kingston on five. Two shot here, looking strong, James. Still swinging it beautifully. That's a little tight down the left side. There is water there. Skirting with it. Bounding on, that's a huge drive. Bickerton at the same hole. He'll be 52 around Christmas time. John, strong driver of the ball. Keeping it out on the safe side. Down the right side of this fairway, no trouble down there. Yeah, safely done. And after the hammering that the conditions have given to these guys over the first couple of days, it's completely changed for the final round. Yeah, the course playing very differently. Hegman got his old European tour caddy there, Joey, on the bag. Also a very strong driver of the ball, Hegman. Yeah, he'll always be remembered as the first Swede ever to play in the Ryder Cup at the Belfry back in 93. Plenty more have followed, of course. The likes of Henrik Stenson, Jesper Parnovic and others. Great drive there from Heggie. These guys enjoying the quiet today without the breeze. We've had Heggie and Bakes. What was your nickname on tour, Scott? Was it Drummy? It was Drum or Drumstick, actually, from some of the guys, but usually Drum. Canonica now with a wedge. Going straight at it, dead aim. Beautiful shot over the top of the flag. Still all new to this Legends Tour level. Only turned 50 earlier this year. Bickerton now. Approach to the fifth. Good spot from this right side of the fairway. Firing it in over the water. Not his finest effort. That's a long, long way from the flag. Hegman now. Perfect spot, as you can see. Just a sand iron, dead aim. Expect this one close. Again, not his best effort. Yeah, and it's not going to be a day for just being solid. Conditions have improved so much as we say. You've got to go and chase the birdies, and he needs better approach shots than that. Now to Kingston. Fantastic drive, just throwing it in here from short range. As Michael said, these guys got to get these shots close. And that's not his finest effort. Still a birdie attempt. Now, Canonica's going well. He's birdied the second, he's birdied the sixth, and if he can birdie here again on seven, he'll be tied for the lead. Yeah, lovely little stretch. Good stroke, just got enough of the right edge. Canonica to nine under. In the hunt. Bickerton was in the hunt at Formby in August, finished one behind Paul Broadhurst in the end, in a share of second place. Still looking for his first win, every chance it could be today. Well, this would be a bonus from this range. It was on target, just needed an ounce more. that one up for the par. Disappointing on this short hole. Definitely a good birdie opportunity today. So Canonica has applied a little early pressure. It's now a three-way tie for the lead. Can Kingston break out of it? it was up and out of that one. Didn't like it. Always on the low side. Greens are running beautifully, so these guys do know Pretty early on, whether they've made it. Yeah, disappointing par after a fantastic drive. A few locals out watching. As we see Hegman now. Can he break out of that tie at nine under? A little left to right on this one. Needs to be firm. And he wasn't. 
So both players missed the chance to get into double figures. What it all means is that we now have a three-way tie for the lead. Could Canonica be the man to deliver the first home win in this event's history? Shack Lady, Dodd and Bickerton all two back. Speaking of Dodd, not far away with this attempt at an eagle two on 12. Birdie guaranteed from there though, and a move to eight under. Not so good for Canonica on the same hole though. A missed par putt from close quarters drags him back to nine under. Disappointing for Canonica. He'll need to keep a lid on it. He can be a fiery character at times. You can see the frustration bubbling away. Chances are plenty as well at the eighth, which is also a drivable par four. Kingston looking frustrated at missing this chance of eagle, but he'll tap in from there to go to 10 under par. And a similar story for Hegman. Threatening the hole a bit more, but birdie for him as well, also into double figures in the red. And he's been giving us his assessment of how this race to the line might play out on the final day. In these conditions today, there are going to be a lot of birdies out here, certainly a lot of opportunities. The greens are tricky. I mean, a lot of people are, you know, not making putts. And the uh, game stuck a couple of really close, and, you know, I haven't been able to make mine, but. I'm still playing nicely, so, you know, just keep plugging along. Hegman then parred all of the next three. So did Kingston, before making his fourth birdie of the day at number 12. Hegman looked sure to follow him in. But how crucial could this prove to be later? Yeah, that's a major blow for Hegman from short range. Can't quite believe it. And for now, it means Kingston leads the senior Italian Open on his own. Shack Lady, Price and Canonica all still have enough holes left to feel they could still win this. After the break, we'll have all the action from the third and final day of the Sergio Melpignano Senior Italian Open. See you in a couple of minutes. Welcome back to the Legends Tour Highlight Show, where it is time for all the action from the final few holes of the Sergio Melpignano Senior Italian Open. Could the 12th hole be the pivotal moment in this battle for the Senior Italian Open? As Joachim Hegman's missed put from short range has seen him overtaken by James Kingston. Barry Lane was the winner of this title last time out in 2019. He isn't going to win it this time, but he has produced one of the shots of the week. Touch of class there from Barry. David Shacklady could do with showing some class here in a tricky spot on 17. He's made that look very easy. Eight straight pars to finish, 66 for him. Peter Wilson can go one better if he somehow makes this at the last. Incredible scenes, what a putt to finish. And Wilson joins Shacklady on nine under after a 65, which Peter Baker can match if he signs off with a birdie. Valiant effort, but not to be for Bakes. Yeah, 66 though means eight under and yet another good week for him. John Bickerton hasn't dropped a shot all day, but only two birdies until that one on 16. Two back, two to play. Unless, of course, Kingston makes this on the same hole. Got to be firm with these putts today. Little left to right. Come on, James, give it enough. A little shy once again. Perhaps just a little bit of nerves kicking in. These guys desperate for their first title. And it's never easy to win. Kingston, two-time winner on the regular European Tour, including the last ever staging of the old German Masters. But his missed putt means Canonica, up ahead on 17, has a chance to get within one. Go on, Pepo. Oh, great try. 
He thought he had that one. Just moved away at the end. Frustrating again. Eggman showing a bit of form towards the finish. Shots like this helping him join Kingston at 11 under par. Wonderful touch from Heggie there. Really showing his short game skills. Fine efforts from Wilson and Shaq Lady, but both unlikely to win now. It looks like a straight fight between Kingston and Hegman, but you never know. Hegman's first win on the regular tour was the Spanish Open in 93, which helped him get that Ryder Cup place. Held off Ernie Els and Nick Faldo to win that one. Just trying to work this long Go. iron in right to left. Go. Bunker on the right, got to be careful. And it looks like he's caught it. Kingston has won all over the place. South Africa, Germany, Thailand, South Korea, Myanmar, Namibia. Right now, it's all about winning in Italy. Yeah, extensive experience and record of winning. And that's a good shot on this hole. Pretty tough today, 208. Long iron for these guys, 3-4 iron. Canonica then going in search of a bit of a miracle here at the last. Yeah, can he produce something? Towering iron shot. Just coming up a little shy. Just popped up on him, I think, coming from the semi-rough. Didn't quite get the full strike. Hegman has been a very global player as well. He's won professional tournaments on four different continents. Well, he did find the right bunker. And that's a bit of a nervy one as well, perhaps. Well, you did call it, Scott. You said these players looking for their first win out here would feel it coming down the closing holes. Indeed. Now, Canonica putting from the fringe. Got to get this to have any hope at all, you would think. Well, he gave it a good try, but now he's left himself a bit of work for par. The oldest story in golf. Kingston now. We saw the tee shot in here. It was a great tee shot. It's a long range birdie attempt. And he's been shy the last few holes. He's had four top tens already this season on the Legends Tour. They came in four straight events, including two occasions when he shared third place. Could he get that breakthrough win today? Canonica now trying to tidy up. Close out his tournament, finish at nine under. Yeah, well done. Front nine of 33, really raised hopes of a home win. Just ran out of steam after that, but it's going to be by far his best Legends Tour showing to date. Trending in the right direction. Going into the Tour Championship in Mauritius next month. Now Dodd, also a little work to do to clean up for his par on 18. Yeah, confidently done. Had a bit of ground to make up today, and there were some positive early signs. Couldn't keep up the early momentum, but he'll finish comfortably inside the top ten. Hegman has been 11th or better in all of his last three events. His best finish so far, a share of 7th last month at Forest of Arden. Oh, that was a great try. That is huge disappointment to make a bogey. On the 17th, leaves the door open for Kingston now, with his four-footer for par. What an opportunity it is for him. It's been so tight between them all day. He can be the man boarding the final tee in the lead if he makes this little pressure put. Yeah, real test of nerves. Come on, James, what have you got? Good stroke. Yeah, well done. Such an untimely backward move for Hegman, who now finds himself back in chasing mode as he plays the last. Bickerton not entirely out of it, but surely needs some assistance from Kingston now. Four hundred and ninety yards this finishing hole. So anything can happen. Yeah, and he did bogey it in the second round. So if those behind him are aware of that, it'll give them a bit of hope. Down for the tee quickly, happy with that one. And that's why. 
Fairway finder, well done. The man behind developing this course, Sergio Melpignano, loved roses. That's why there's one on every tee. Big tee shot here for Heggy. He's happy with that as well. Yeah, bounding down there. Giving himself a chance still. He's parred this hole in both rounds. This is what the guys are going to have from those tee shots they've hit. Great tee shots into the fairway. You can see the shot over the scrubland. Plenty of bunkers around the green. These guys will be taking dead aim. This man needs to. Great shot here, and he could close this tournament out. 56 later this month. Can he give himself a really nice early present? He's eyeing it down. Oh, wonderful shot from Kingston. Thank you. Straight over the flag, just about five feet. And what a mark of quality that is to produce a shot like that on the final hole with so much on the line. How does Hegman respond with all his experience? Well, he's got to match him at least for a chance. Come left, come left. Be right. No, come on. Thank you. Oh, it's a great shot as well. Keeping it below the hole, he'll have first go to make birdie, put the pressure on Kingston. Well, that's what he's got to do now. He's very much second favourite after that wonderful approach. But all Hegman can do is ask the question. Nice to see the players all out to watch this final hole. They know how important it is, how difficult it is to win out here. Another case of not quite for Bickerton. Former winner of the French Open. It was a valiant try and another good week, like you say, Michael. Another player who's trending in the right direction. And surely due a win sometime soon. Not a drop shot on the card, just a few birdies dotted around. But he stayed in the chase almost to the very end. And as you say, that first win surely can't be very far away now. Now, Hegman has got to put the pressure on here. It's his only hope. Yeah, he's got to be bold with it. Oh, and it moved again. Just short of the hole. I think he thought he had it. He'll be left to reflect on that bogey on 17, which really came at such a bad time. But don't forget the short put that he unexpectedly missed on 12. He really needed to get that in to leave Kingston, requiring this for the title. It's two puts from here to win now. Well, he's used both of them. It was a fine shot in. It's a great win, an emotional win, I'm sure, for James. Yep, because he's a champion on the Legends Tour for the first time as James Kingston takes the Senior Italian Open. Great entertainment provided by this final group, and not least from Kingston, for whom a 68 wins it after he started the day two behind. Hegman gets his best Legends Tour finish yet in second. Canonica shares third with the English trio of Wilson, Shacklady and Bickerton. It's a, it's a great feeling, obviously, you know. I feel like I've had a monkey on my back for a while and uh, managed to get, it, get rid of it today. The winner, Sergio Melpignano Senior Italian Open, Mr. Kingston Florence. And so, with the 65th attempt, James Kingston finally gets his hands on a Legends Tour trophy. The cheque for €45,000 is secondary, but that'll still come in handy. Perhaps most important of all, though, the congratulations of the many friends he's built up over the years. Obviously, I've been wanting to win, but when you see your fellow pros come out and, and be there for your first one, that meant a lot to me, honestly, to see the guys pitch up. Uh, they could have gone back to the hotel, but a lot of them came out and they knew what it would mean to me, but uh, it was just a great gesture from all of them. Marcus. Marcus Breer there among the contemporaries of Kingston, coming out to share his moment in the spotlight. Stephen Dodd, after sharing seventh place, his top going into the final event of the season. Kingston's win takes him up to sixth. A great story at the end of a great week. James Kingston is the winner. All that's left now is Mauritius and the Tour Championship.
that's the end of the show, I'm afraid. The next time we see you will be at the final event of the season, the MCB Tour Championship Mauritius. From all of us at San Domenico Golf, thanks for watching. See you again soon.